Here we go people, we are Bushcraft Camp 2018 on the way in the car. It's been a bit of a mad rush, we're hoping we're going to have enough light once we get there. Uh, we've just gone up a few country lanes now, so not long until we get there. Um, I reckon we've got about 5-10 minutes to go. Uh, I think everyone's packed, I think we've got everything. Uh, once we've done the car that's going to be it, so uh, wish us luck and uh, we'll catch up with you when we get there. through the woods it's pretty thick it's the first time we've been here so we did just come in and give it a little bit of a scout so we could find a good place for clearing which um, we've got up here it's gonna be a little bit lumpy ground but uh, look at all the fresh wood we got I say fresh it's nice and dead and dry um, so we're not gonna have a problem with firewood um, but yeah it's uh, it's just a pretty thick woods so it's exciting, I think it's perfect. Like I say, we've not been on this land before, so hopefully we'll be all right <clears throat> once we do our little trick and I'll catch up with you when we get to the camp. Yummy, yummy tea. Oh, good morning, guys. Bushcraft 2018, we made it. Late last night, it was getting dark pretty quick, so uh, we got the tent set up. We spoke to the landowner, and we had a visitor as well. So uh, yeah, we've got everything, beautiful location, really happy with it. Got this fallen tree that we found here. There's dead wood everywhere, so fire's not gonna be a problem. Yeah, really, really happy. So obviously, we didn't really know what to expect before we got here. So now we've seen it, definitely really happy. Tent set up, Ollie's in his hammock, me and Dan in tents. Found a good clearing. We've got a fallen log here, we're gonna use as our base camp. Ollie and Dan actually this morning have already rigged up a tripod, so we've got a griddle set up over the fire. I'm gonna be chopping some wood and getting the Kelly kettle going and make more tea. Dan's got some wood to chop today. I think Ollie's got a spoon he wants to make out of a bit of wood, so that'll be interesting. And I want to get my catapult out because I haven't had that out for ages. So uh, stay tuned guys and we'll see what sort of day we have. Right, so the boys have been cutting some wood. We're gonna get the Kelly kettle going so we can make ourselves a brew. Think about the Kelly kettle though, very small fire base, so what we need to do is to break the wood down as small as we can get it. So I'm gonna use my Gerber folding knife with a serrated edge, which tends to gut through the grain quite nicely. Right, so we're just carrying on splitting down the wood as small as I can get it. Obviously, the smaller you can get it, the quicker it's gonna burn for the first ignition. So these sort of sizes are beautiful. And then to really get things going, what we're gonna do is make a feathering stick quickly, just to get it even more fine, almost like tinder. Um, and that'll help us get the fire going. 
So here's a nice piece here. And all we want to do is just start trying to get some curls coming up with your knife. Again, I'm using the Gerber knife with a serrated blade. I tend to like the curls you get from it. So it will start to take as you start getting it round. And again, using the serrations on my blade, I can get some extra thin curly curly ones which uh, really, really catch the flame well. Feel like we're really starting to get a good old bush going there. And then I tend to get this stem down to nice and thin so you can just snap the stick in the end and then I can put that whole thing we can then put this whole thing into the actual fire pot and we'll use this to get the fire going right so we've got our feather stick which we've uh, put down in the feathers um, here's the fire base and this is the Kelly kettle um, essentially the water goes into the main compartment there but it's actually hollow and so what happens is the flames go up the middle and heat the water all the way around while it's sitting in the fire base. Very, very effective, I love it. You know, it doesn't take more than just a few little twigs, quite literally, to get this thing going. So it's very efficient with your, with your fuel. So what I'm gonna do, we'll fill the Kelly, Kelly kettle up with water. Um, what we'll do, I'm gonna be using a fire strike and just my Oppenel number eight um, to get ourselves a good old spark going so we can get a fire going and have a cup of tea. I've got a uh, piece of tree bark here that I found, which I've decided this is now my uh, fire preparation surface. So I've got a nice bit of tree bark here. And what I like to do, what we can do is just start building up the fire with the small parts, starting with the smallest we can possibly get, start building up a pyramid around it. Make sure we keep as much air in there as, as we can, but also, there's a hole at the front of here in the Kelly Kettle fire base. So it's important that we keep that area clear because that's where we're going to be passing the ignition through with a wax twine. I've had a fire box here, just uh, fire starting bits and pieces. I usually take some fat wood as well, which can light pretty much even if it's wet. So if you really get into trouble, um, you can use fat wood. And in fact, if you're really, really in trouble, I think I've got a piece here. What you can do, similar to what we did before, is you can actually use the fat wood to get shavings as well. And when you put the shavings in there, you'll really get, again, just a little bit more fuel. Um, this is goes up really nicely. So if you're really struggling, you can actually use some of this as well. But today, I think we're gonna be okay. So what I like using is these wax twines. Now, they kind of are exactly as they sound. They're a piece of twine and they've got some wax coating. And you just simply fray up, fray up the end of the wax twine. And then you'll end up with some nice frayed edges here. And the more you can fray them out, the more air you're gonna get in between the fibers and you get a real nice ignition. Fire strike, ferrocerium rod. And what I'm gonna use for this is my Oppenel number eight. And the back edge on this is very, very sharp, which allows you to get a really good strike. So what we're also gonna do is we're gonna just scrape down just a little bit and we're gonna get some of these filings to load up onto the actual twine. So when you feel like you've got a nice good bit of, um, bit of material on here from the ferrocerium rod, just a case of what I do is I pull the ferrocerium rod backwards And hey presto, we have fire. Just be able to pass this into, through the hole, get it underneath those lovely curls we made on that feather stick, and look at her go. Look at her go, ladies and gentlemen. This is what we're talking about. We will have tea in no time. Get the Kelly kettle on the top. So once the fire's going inside, we can just feed wood into the top. 
and it will continue to burn. Quite literally, just a few little bits is enough to make a whole, what, 1.2 litres is it? Just over one litre of water. This is the Scout version of the Kelly Kettle. You can get a junior version, I think there's a base camp version, but this was the happy medium for me. And we'll leave that going, and we'll have some tea. Look at that flame go. It is beautiful. It definitely has some sort of a, uh, it's like a turbine effect that sucks the air up and really gives you this jet. And it's lovely. Literally just pick up some branches, some dead wood from around the forest, around the woods, anything like that. And I'll tell you, one of the nice things as well about the Kelly Kettle is you get a um, various bits with it. There's a base here to just do the fire base. And also, these are handy. Pop these together. You can load that in the top. And what it allows you to do is you use your pan or your saucepan and you can pop that on top to be cooking up your eggs at the same time. Bear in mind the water around the inside there is being heated all the time. So you've got that added benefit. Um, or you can pop your pot on the top. You can do up your noodles or whatever. Still have enough water in the actual base to make your tea. It's absolutely ideal. I absolutely love it. Usually it means I can make my tea in the morning and I can make my porridge as well at the same time. And here we go. That's the sound we wanted. Now you see normally with the Kelly Kettle you get the uh, orange stopper and you shouldn't actually use the orange stopper while you're cooking with it and while it's on the heat because it will actually explode. Uh, but I've upgraded to the green which is the whistle, the Kelly Kettle whistle. Absolutely invaluable, definitely recommend it. So let's get the brews made. So, what are you up to, Ollie? Uh, possibly going to end up with a spoon. 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 See, Ollie went on one of those uh, master classes, Ray Mears, wasn't it? Yeah. Ray Mears master class carving. So, um, learn how to do a spoon. And uh, we'll see if we can get a log into a spoon. What do you think, Ollie? Doable? I think so. It might take me the rest of the weekend, but it's <laughs> doable. <laughs> well, it's looking good so far. So this year, I thought I'd bring along my Pro Diablo catapult. Give you a close look of it. It's basically got um, some counterbalance here, give you a bit more stability, lovely, nice comfy grip. And here you see I've actually replaced these uh, with the orange bands. These are the high power bands. But yeah, I thought I'd bring this along. I'm using some ball bearings, uh, stainless steel. These are 12 millimeters or half inch bearings. And uh, I thought we'd come along do a bit of target practice. So let's see how we get on. So here we go. It's gonna be the first shot, see how we get on. There's my target on the tree. We got it. So yeah, a couple of those felt like they were pretty close. Oh, look at that, bang in the middle. Like it. Couple up here, another one in here, look. Pretty good grouping, so yeah, happy with that. I do love my Pro Diablo. How you getting on, dude? We're getting there. Well, it's not looking like a log anymore, is it? It's not looking like a spoon either, but... <laughs> <laughs> We're working on it. It's looking good. Look at that. You've got the pattern drawn on there as well. Is there much more? Much more? Bit more? Bit more. Uh, realistically, probably another hour or so. Really? Yeah. It's looking good though, dude. 
I can't wait to see it finished. <laughs> So this is the tent that I've got, which is the pyramid tent from DD Tarps. I've got the inner tent and the outer tent. Um, very lightweight, it's about one kilo for both the inner and the outer tent. And the only thing really I'd do differently is I have a ground sheet as well that I found that fits perfectly. And I've got walking stick inside, so very, very lightweight. I've got my climate sleeping mac, I've got my snug pack, special forces one sleeping bag. Super, super comfy, really happy with that. So yeah, it's a pretty lightweight setup. You do need to have a bit of a level ground for it. So we did a bit of clearing last night uh, to get the ground nice and level. It's gone up really nice, literally 20 minutes, 20 minutes flat, we're done. And you can enjoy the rest of the camp without worrying about your tent falling down. So uh, yeah, really happy with this. It's been a great purchase. Not had any problems with it at all. So yeah, highly recommend it. DD Tarps, Pyramid Tent. So it's finished now, is it? Yeah, I'd I mean, call it's it finished. Look at it's, that. It it's looks a like usable a usable spoon. I'll probably carry on fiddling with it, but that's lovely. Finished article. Check it out. Look at that. Well done, Ollie. That's a beautiful, beautiful job. And bear in mind, guys, don't forget, we started off with this, split it down, got into something like this. Then it got into something like that. And from that, into a spoon! Love it. Brilliant. That is bushcraft. Oof. Starting to get dark now. So uh, we're going to get our steaks going. Got a nice fire going. We had a great day today. I think Ollie did a great job on his spoon. Uh, Dan's been cutting a whole load of wood, so we've got wood to last us all evening. And we'll try and get some photos, and uh, they'll be after this little segment. And um, yeah, it's been a really great day, great fun, really good bonding time as well, with some great chats, which is what it's all about. And uh, can't wait to come back again, but we're still here another night, and we'll catch up with you in the morning. <laughs>